fellow blenders this is Peter here with PM designs in this video I'm going to show you the second method um, for creating some disgusting slimy looking tentacles um, but this one is slightly more difficult uh, just like this video uh, first thing I want to do is give a shout out to to Keenan profit which is where I got some of the idea for this one um, but I just added a few little touches of my own so that it can be animated and you can make tentacles using it but i definitely recommend you go and check out his channel he's got loads of cool stuff uh, right so let's get straight on with it we are going to be doing geometry nodes today which if you haven't done geometry nodes before don't be scared because this is very easy this is my first video about geometry nodes and it's just, I've, I've done a few different um i've followed a few different tutorials on geometry nodes and after a while you do start to pick it up and you can figure things out for yourself so just don't worry too much let's get on with it get into the geometry nodes tab I'm gonna close this down first thing I'm gonna do is add a curve to start with which is gonna be a bezier curve doesn't matter which and I'm gonna call this pentacles that move that over here first thing I'm gonna do is add a resample curve node and pop that in there okay so that is my curve done here so now I'm going to just to start with I'm gonna add in a mesh which is going to be Suzanne. I'm going to do the same thing I did to her last time. Go to my Bezier curve, edit mode, delete those vertices, and I'm going to draw all over Suzanne like that. Okay, so my curve is there. You just can't see it right now. I need to give the curve a radius. So I'm going to add in a set radius curve. Set curve radius, sorry. Plug that in there. I need to add in a curve to mesh node pop that in there and that now I just need to give um, a reference point for the profile of the curve so I can add I can go to add object or I can add a um, sorry a curve circle bring that in down here and then plug that into the profile Wow massive bring the radius right down to 0 0.01 for now so there you go you can see my curve so I did it wrong. I didn't, so it's not in the right place. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, select or delete those vertices, and then I'm going to draw on the surface of Suzanne. There we go. Right, we're getting it now. So that's how we're getting the curve going. If it's not smooth enough, we can just incre increase the count over here until we get something which looks quite smooth. And that's that is the basis of this. How this is going to work is now we can just go into click on our curve, tab into edit mode, and we can just draw tentacles everywhere, wherever we want. But okay, first we want to be able to animate them. That is very easy. We can just move this out a little bit here, our group input, and add in a trim curve node. Plop that in there. So now if I bring this down, you can see they start to grow up, which is quite nice. Yeah. And they're all growing at the same time, which I'll talk about later, how you would uh, modify that. So now let's say we want the end to be tapered. And if you saw my last video, I made them tapered, but the taper was only at the end. With the geometry nodes method, we can keep them tapered all the way through. So I'm going back into my set curve radius here. I'm going to move this along slightly. I want it to be tapered as, as it grows up. So at this point, the end is tapered. At this point, the end is tapered. All the way down, the end is going to be tapered. So I need to, to in, in order to define where that is, I need to bring in a spline parameter node. Plug that in down there. And then I'm gonna add in a color ramp. Um, you could do this in a few different ways with a math node or a float, whatever. But I'm gonna do it with a color ramp. Plug the factor into the color ramp, and then this goes into the radius here. Okay, you can see they are tapered, but they're tapered at the wrong end. So I wonder how we deal with that. Switch the color ramp over, okay. And that is, so if I bring these right up, that's how we keep it tapered. Yeah, but they're a little bit too thin, so I can bring this up here, and that will keep the end tapered. So that's that's what's cool about using geometry, geometry nodes, is that I can um, have them tapered as they grow, which is quite nice, so they grow, as they go back down, yeah. They're tapered at the end, looking like whatever you want to say that looks like. Okay, but let's say that all, let's say that also we want 
um, some sort of lumps and bumps on the tentacles. You don't, maybe you don't want them to be perfectly smooth. So let's try that as well. So I'm going to move this one out a little bit here, and I'm going to add in a math node. Drop that in there, and it's going to be multiply. Okay, so now if I add in a random value node, and plug that in here to the second value, you can see we start to get some random little lumps and bumps. And these bumps will be defined by your count under your resample curve. So if I do that, we get many, many, many more. So I don't really want that many. And also, so I can set the minimum and the maximum to define how big they are. Minimum means they have zero radius, so I don't want it on zero. I want that on 0.1. And the max, you could, you know, you could do like that, and you start to get some really fat curves. But that for now is is good enough. I think that looks quite nice. But also let's let's add in some more curves. What's really fun about this is you can just go absolutely crazy and draw tentacles everywhere. Okay. Let's make them a little bit fatter just for now. So I'm going to bring my rate of 0.1, something like that. So we can see that that is too much of a difference here. So I'm going to set my max on 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So they're a little bit lumpy bumpy. Right, the next problem I have is that all the tentacles are the same size. Maybe you want that, which is fine, which is cool. But maybe you don't. So let's figure out how we can do that. This is when things get a little bit complicated, but not too complicated. Don't worry. So basically, I need to separate each tentacle by what by each tentacle. In order to do that, I need let's make a little bit more space down here. I hope this is not. If you're a beginner, I hope this is not looking too intimidating. But as you can see. Well, what have we got? We've got like 10, 11 nodes, and it's already making quite a nice effect, which is animatable, which is the great thing. Oh yeah, and also that happens, but that's that's easily fixed. Um, right, so I need to separate these uh, tentacles. So I need to add in, oops, down here, add in a capture attribute node, okay? And that's gonna be the ID. Okay, I want to capture the ID, and I want to capture the, the ID of each curve, each spline. So in order to do that, I need to switch the first box to integer and the second to spline. Okay, and then just plug that ID into the value down here. So now I'm going to move this stuff, move this over here a little bit. I want to add in another random value, which, use, which using each spline's ID is going to set the minimum radius. So I can just duplicate this one plug the value into the minimum of this one and then I'm going to bring down my capture attribute uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to get my capture attribute attribute output and plug that into the ID of this new random value okay so now if I set the max up and the minimum down a little bit and I can just show you here if I mess with the seed we got some thin tentacles and we got some not so thin tentacles. I don't think it's polite to call them fat. So not so thin is the preferred term. And so that's that's the basis of it. That's done. Very, very easy. So then if you want to animate this, you just use the start and end. But maybe you don't necessarily want to be coming in and out of the geometry nodes when you animate. So if you haven't used geometry nodes before, you can plug these into your group input, which will bring it up over here on the output attributes. So if I plug in my start and my end, it's over here now, so I can do it from here. But so, okay, I have a problem here is that when they are um, at their minimum, or not, not, not quite minimum, but when they're smaller, they've got a lot of distortion going on because of the um, random, the random uh, minimum, minimum and maximum in the radius. So what I want to do is come here to resample curve. This basically like the first one of the first nodes we did. Change this to length. Okay, so then if I just bring them back out, you'll see that based on their length, they get these nice um, bumps growing in and out of them, which changes as it grows, which I think looks quite nice. Looks quite good as they as they're growing up. They're kind of rippling and bubbling and stuff like that. So the last thing we need to do is we want to give it a shader, but then I just add a set material node. Plug that in there. And I'm just going to make a very quick material, which I'm going to make um, just, just like green for now. And then I'm going to call that green. And then you go into your 
set material node, click that and find green, which is there. So now we have green tentacles. That's it. Easy. I, I think if, you're, if you've never used geometry nodes before, that is not too intimidating. Another thing we could do if you wanted to is make these look a little bit smoother. So because at this point they have become a mesh, I can subdivide them. So you can add a subdivision surface here, subdivision surface, because we're using, they're now meshes. And I click this here and I can choose the level and it will start to make them look a little bit smoother. If you want to make your tentacles grow at separate speeds, you're gonna have some fun. No, not really, it's pretty easy. Come into your tentacles in edit mode and find one which you want to have grow at a different speed. I'm gonna choose, highlight one of these vertices and press L. So I've selected that one and pressed P to separate. Okay, so that this one is now separate. I'm gonna call this slow curve. Doesn't matter because I'm not gonna animate it. Come into my geometry nodes. I've got my slow curve selected. Gonna come back to my geometry nodes group. And all I have to do is click this one, copy geometry node group. Bang. So now this one is tentacles.001 and I can animate this one separately. And then I can do this one as well. So if you, if you wanted to have a hundred tentacles moving at different speeds, I don't recommend you do that, but you would have to just basically go in, separate each tentacle by going into edit mode. I'll do it one more time. Go into edit mode, select, hover over one of the vertices, press L, press P to separate, and then come down here again and just copy that. So now this one has its own separate speed. Okay, so um, if you're interested in the shader that I showed at the beginning, I'm gonna make a video about that very soon. I'm not sure when, so you might wanna subscribe. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, if you found that useful, please drop a like. If not, please let me know why. And thanks very much.